Hello and welcome, I'm Dr Tony Wakeford. For this short talk I have selected two sets of historical record, the marriage registers for the parish and the decennial census. Beyond the recorded individuals, these records can help reveal something about the wider demographic and economic character of past communities. I've chosen the small rural parish of Yapton to focus specifically on the origins and changing composition of the parish population and its related patterns of migration. The parish is situated two miles from the sea between Arundel and Chidester, covering an area of approximately 1,740 acres. It is one of 60 parishes on the Sussex coastal plain and is surrounded by seven neighbouring or contiguous parishes. Yapton is an agricultural parish in a flat and fertile area where market gardening developed significantly during the 19th century. The Portsmouth and Arundel Canal between Ford and Chetester Harbour, part of the Way and Arran Junction Canal Company, opened in 1823 and passed through the village. Although it was claimed in Piggott's directory for 1839 that the canal was of little advantage to the parish, probably because of the lack of wharf facilities. Surviving remnants of the canal are now in a residential area. A railway station was situated a mile north of the village on the boundary with the parishes of Binstead and Warburton and opened in 1846. It closed temporarily between 1848 and 49 due to financial constraints experienced by the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway Company and was then closed permanently in 1864 when the nearby Barnum Junction station opened for the Bognor branch. The railway's influence on Yapton was negligible, partly due to the location of the station and because of the limited level of service. For example in 1853 there were two up and two down trains, morning and evening, Monday to Saturday, with three up and two down trains on Sundays. The railway dealt a mortal blow to the canal and commercial traffic ceased between Ford and Chidester in 1847 and finally closed in 1888. From the early 1860s, John Sparks set up an agricultural engineering business that flourished and was employing 30 men and 7 boys by the 1870s. On this brief outline of the parish, we will now examine the marriage registers to highlight the information they contain to reveal the wider connections of the parish. By recording the residential information in the marriage registers of every bride and groom, the extent of external connections with the parish can be identified. I have selected the sample period 1700 to 1900, during which there were 633 marriages recorded in the parish. This is not a complete record and there are some gaps in the records between 1738 and 45. In the early 1700s the parish was rather quiet with generally only a couple of marriages each year with occasional fluctuations. There is only one marriage in the 200 year period where the bride and groom were not from Yapton. The slide illustrates the number of marriages in 10 year blocks between 1700 and 1900. The dip in the early 1700s reflects the gaps in the records noted earlier. The orange columns indicate those marriages that comprise Yapton residents or those from its neighbouring parishes. The trend is rather variable and peaks in the period 1830-1840. The purple segment of the columns indicates the number of those marriages when either the bride or groom, mostly, were not from Yapton or its neighbouring parishes. During the 19th century, marriages involving non-Sussex participants had increased considerably and there were 30 involving people from Hampshire, London, Lancashire, Surrey, Yorkshire and Ireland. The greatest connection was with Hampshire, a third of all those marriages. But marriage remained a local affair with 78% being between Yapton residents and in four ten-year periods it was 100%. The use of place of abode as a basis for analysis is not without its interpretive issues. For example, those shown as living in the parish may have moved there at an earlier time. 
The implication here is that the exogenous element may be larger than the marriage registers tend to indicate. A more accurate assessment can be gained from the census returns and it is to those that we now turn to examine the scale of the population and its composition as recorded at each census up to 1921. The parish population in the early 1700s was around 200. The population of the first decennial census in 1801 was 543 and up to 1871 varied in size with alternate growth and decline every 10 years. However, from 1891 onwards, there was consistent growth and by 1901, the population had reached 715, an overall increase from the 1801 census of 32%. The population had increased further to 751 by the time of the 1911 census. Of greater interest, is the composition of the population and the extent of external connections identified in the marriage registers. The census of 1841 was the first to record personal details and their county of birth for each member of the population. From the 1851 census, the parish of birth was recorded. The birth origins data extracted from the censuses between 1851 and 1921 reveals the steady growth of exogenous or external origins, particularly those born beyond Sussex. By contrast, the number of locally and contiguous parish born forming the endogenous element of the population declined but remained the largest cohort in the parish until the 1901 census. By 1921, those with external origins to the parish and its neighbouring parishes were the dominant proportion of the population at 64%. The proportion of those born outside of Sussex had risen consistently from 3% in 1841 to 26% by 1921, although nearly a third of the parish population were still local born and bred in 1921. The extent of those from elsewhere gives this quiet, predominantly rural parish a very cosmopolitan feel for those born in 27 English and Welsh counties, Ireland, Scotland and five born overseas. Only 11 of the 186 households were all members born in Yapton. As more people moved into locally dominated communities, so they would have bought new ideas, customs, practices, wider social and economic connections and even variations of language and phrases from other parts of the country and beyond. The geographer Doreen Massey refers to the thrown togetherness of communities, a melting pot of ideas, practices and interactions between the members of the community and the place where they lived. The census returns show there was a general trend of those born in Yapton to increasingly live elsewhere on the coastal plain. Between 1851 and 1901 there was an increase from 244 to 319 in the number of Yapton born living elsewhere on the coastal plain. By 1881, more Yapton born were living elsewhere on the coastal plain than in their parish of birth. The 1901 census records a majority of 95 more Yapton born living in other coastal plain parishes than those enumerated in Yapton. The 1911 and 1921 censuses respectively record 472 and 498 Yapton born enumerated elsewhere in England and Wales. More than double those enumerated in the parish of those censuses. We should note the considerable impact of the Great War on the overall population and the parish in particular. The Yapton War Memorial at St Mary's Church commemorates 33 dead representing approximately 4% of the 1911 parish population and which is partly reflected in the 1921 census being comparable to the 1901 census. What this short examination of two specific historical records has shown is that so much more can be revealed about the wider social character and composition of a community beyond the events and individual names recorded in the parish registers and census returns. Not only did the population grow, 
but its composition of origins became much more diverse. The parish population of 1921 was significantly different to that in 1851. To know something about our ancestors is one thing, but to know something about the context in which they lived is quite another and helps to provide that richness of understanding. Thank you for listening.